Президент РФ Владимир Путин. Right. So, the goings on in the past couple of days regarding stronghold kingdoms are something of great interest to many people who play the game. And uh, there are a few issues that I would like to address outside of the forums. And I think a video is the best uh, medium to do that in. So, starting from the basics, what exactly happened to the best of my knowledge is that apparently a player had discovered or more accurately exploited a bug that was latent in the game that allowed them to send over 1,800 captains in an attack against another player. Now this attack successfully raised that village that was attacked and apparently this uh, attracted Firefly's attention to it and they proceeded to shut Global Conflict 1 down. Now there were a lot of fears that this problem would be spread throughout other servers but interestingly enough, Firefly did not close any of the other ones down, although there was a report of a smaller attack on Global Conflict 2 that failed. So I think a lot, a lot of people really want to know is, you know, how safe, how secure is the game? Has this really been patched? And how do we know it's not going to happen again? Because if, uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of the older players here will remember the Eagle attack, I believe it was that used around 500 captains, and this was back in 2011 or 2010, back when the game was still in beta. And we had thought it was fixed back then, but it appears that perhaps only a certain part of it was fixed, and another, another area that could be exploited was discovered and proceeded to be exploited. Now, one of the problems that commonly occur with this is how Firefly handles the entire thing. So there isn't a whole lot of communication with Firefly. I think a lot of players attest to this. There is what I would call a general sentiment of apathy towards the, the player base and really keeping them up to date, engaging them, etc. Oh, engaging them in what's going on with the game. You know, all these people are invested, a lot of them quite heavily in the game. You know, they play it. It is their major pastime and they invest real life currency into it so it's understandable that they would want to know the risks of such a thing and unfortunately it's not in Firefly's best interest to disclose any of that because generally the quicker you sweep something under the rug the sooner it's forgotten about and then players can just pretty much proceed to carry on as if nothing had happened if you sort of acknowledge it then it gives players ammunition that they will likely use against you in the future as a reason not to play your game Unfortunately, that is just the current state of the industry and there isn't a whole lot you can do about it unless you start actually speaking with your dollars and refusing to buy games from less than consumer friendly developers. Now, I'm not personally convinced that Firefly is not consumer friendly. I just think they, they have an outdated idea of what PR is. It doesn't seem they are very social media savvy, for example. They don't engage their audience like a lot of other newer developers do so a lot of the a lot of what builds sort of a personality around a developer is lost for firefly for example they could go ahead and do live streams now they have tried this with stronghold crusader but never with stronghold kingdoms and the great thing about live streaming is it gives the community a chance to interact with the developers and one of my favorite developers currently Klee Entertainment does exactly this, I think, every week with their games, especially Don't Starve. And I'm, I really, uh, I can't recommend Klee Entertainment highly enough, I think, because much like the CD Projekt Red, they are a model developer, what a lot of the, what a lot of game developers should aspire to be in the industry. They are good at engaging their audiences they listen to feedback. They make sure that you know the consumer is done right by them. They will give away things to make sure that players are happy. Like when they announced that the uh, they would be expanding Don't Starve to include a multiplayer version of the client, every player who owned the Don't Starve game already was grandfathered in. That was over a year's worth of development time just on the multiplayer expansion. It was given in good faith to the players 
who had already, you know, been loyal enough and had bought Clean Entertainment's Don't Starve game for the single player experience. And I think that's another region or area where Firefly regularly drops the ball. You see, there is a vocal minority when it comes to these instances. These people come out of the woodwork and they make a greater stink about the situation of the game than most other players ever would. And how can you deal with that? Well, the way Firefly has attempted to deal with it for the most part is to ignore them and maybe ban them if they get too unruly. Another way to deal with it is to buy them off. And this can actually be more effective because a lot of the times there are only a few, you know, maybe a hundred different players who are really vocal about it, who will go around bad mouthing you to the grave because of what you did, what they feel was an injustice to them. So if you invest a little bit in those players, they can be bought off and sometimes they can be converted into advocates for your work. People who will actually say, you know what, this developer, they did go above and beyond the Call of Duty to make sure that I was done right by. And that can actually be quite powerful. I think quite often, Firefly underestimates the value of grassroots advertising. They don't understand the intrinsic value in a house marshal, for example, who has a big sway over the perceptions of the game for the entire faction or multiple factions if they're a house marshal. That is a lot of people that they bring together to form a house to fight against other houses in the world. And one of the common complaints that I've seen by these house marshals especially or faction generals is that Firefly doesn't really pay any additional attention to them despite the fact that these are very key players in maintaining a growing and you know a functioning player base if you if you ignore those people you're not doing yourself any favors i mean i i can understand that you don't want to play favorites or anything but you want your great you you want to support your biggest fans like if there is somebody who is going to be out there actively on the sidelines promoting you and cheering you on you want to give them the extra recognition for the work that they do because they're promoting you. They're selling you to other people. That is really the best compliment you can give somebody or somebody's work is to refer it to another person. And that's what a lot of this grassroots advertising does. It is somebody, like I just did it for Klee Entertainment, for example. They were a developer that as far as I can tell and in my experience went above and beyond what was reasonably expected of one, of a developer, to make sure that they did right by the consumers. And I will gladly tell other people about their policies and how they treat the consumers because I, I fully support them. And Firefly, I don't think, understands that. Maybe they do, and maybe it's just due to a lack of overall human resources that they, they don't dedicate enough to it. But, like, I, I'm a moderator, right? I have been a volunteer moderator for a couple of years, maybe three years now. And... Not a whole lot of, I mean, I think a lot of players think that I know things that they don't, but the truth is that the the biggest announcements are usually handed down to me from house marshals. We are usually further removed from the loop than the people actually at the highest levels in the game are, which might which might mean something because it sort of means that apparently those top players do have a link with some intelligence within the studio, the Firefly studio, but more accurately to the point, it further reflects the lack of appreciation of your biggest fans and those who support you the most. And there, there, yeah, there's a lack of acknowledgement, I think, a lot of the time. And that's not good for Firefly. If they want to continue drawing and attracting players to the game, they need to make sure that players uh, will themselves promote it to their friends and their family and get everybody involved because it's an MMO. You know, you need to recommend it to other people. You know, you got to be playing. You got to invite other people into the game you're playing. So that those are my thoughts on basically how Firefly handled it. But now we're going to get into some more specifics regarding the actual event and some of the things that went badly. So after Firefly closed Global Conflict 1, they didn't close any other worlds. And they told 
uh, they, they wrote on the forum that the game would be back up at 12 a.m., I believe it was, GMT. Now, they, did, they didn't meet this deadline. They set a deadline for themselves. They didn't meet it. So at 12 a.m. GMT, I believe it was 12 a.m. It could have been. It was, it was June 1st. It was supposed to be back up. And it wasn't back up at that time. They waited another hour and approximately 30 minutes to bring it back up and didn't inform anybody of this change. So this ties into another area that I think Firefly is largely disconnected with their player base on, that they don't seem to understand exactly how important it is to actually nail down the times of these updates, because I haven't played a lot of War in this game, but I can tell you that when I did, having downtime for the server was a big deal. And I wanted to know the exact times when we could expect it to be back up. And the problem with Firefly is they don't put it up at a time. They'll say, uh, downtime should be roughly four hours or something like that. That's no good. That's no good to me. If I, I'll have to put on an extra 12 hours of interdiction unnecessarily for that. And if you're running on fumes, that is unreasonable when all that Firefly needs to do is be a little bit more clear in their communications with the players. It is as simple as sending out a tweet perhaps on social media. It is not hard to do. You have a news section right there in your client that tells you about which games are online, which games are offline. You could easily stick it in there. Problem solved. Firefly doesn't do that. So guess what? They pissed off a whole bunch of players when they told them that the game would be back up at 12 a.m., and instead, it came back at 1.30, which means that a lot of them weren't on ID, and they got raised because of it. Easily preventable, dropped, Firefly completely dropped the ball on that one. It is inexcusable, the lack of foresight that they had for that. And the only thing that I can chalk it up to is an administration that is not in touch with the meta of the game, of their own game. They do not understand what the meta is for the top level gameplay of their own game, Stronghold Kingdoms. That is what, I, and I think, I like to be charitable, right? I don't like to make, you know, I give, I try to give people the benefit of the doubt, but Firefly has made it difficult time and time again when they have so, so, so badly missed out on something this simple. And in addition to this, once the, uh, the server came back up, it was rolled back approximately one day, I believe, uh, it was rolled back to the time period before the uh, the attack, the cheating attack, had been launched. And after that, the there were, there were a couple of problems that cropped up. People who bought card or who who spent cards, they were not reimbursed for any of that stuff. Uh, apparently, if you entered a vacation mode on that world during that time period, your vacation mode was removed. But at the same time, you remained in vacation on all the other worlds. So just in Global Conflict 1, you were no longer in vacation. So you essentially lost a vacation there. Apparently, there were a few players that that did occur to. And of course, you know, anything spent during that time period, as far as I'm aware, uh, that was not linked directly to the game world was not restored. So anything account based that you had uh, consumed in that world but was not, um, in other words, like cards, card points, that kind of stuff. It would not be reimbursed. So one of the biggest problems, because I think a lot of the uh, backlash in the forums is actually justified, and this might surprise a lot of people because I, I just, gen I don't like say, hey, yeah, you're right. Thumbs up. You know, I, don't, I don't reply to comments a lot saying that. I usually call it the ones I disagree with. So it might seem like, I am actually on Firefly's side in how they handled this, and I, I think I understand it from both sides. You know, I'm not very much involved in either of them. I'm not a developer, and I'm not ac actively playing the game, so I wasn't really affected by any of this stuff. And uh, from my view on it, yeah, I pointed out how Firefly failed in sort of their duty as a developer to communicate, but at the same time, a lot of the players have been overreacting in the forums and they have been the craziest tinfoil hat stuff i i don't know if it's even worth countering anymore there have been a couple of players at least that i think need a timeout in other words they need 
at least a temporary ban because what they are saying in the forums is the, just the most outrageous conspiracy sort of theories possible. So one of the biggest ones is that I'm seeing all over the place is that apparently the Russians, any, anybody from Russia, yeah, they just get a free free pass to cheat because a couple of them, I guess, have have apparently paid Firefly big amounts, huge amounts of rubles to allow them to cheat. Um, no, that pretty much doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, there has been this perpetuated myth that players in Russia get to cheat because they have communal IP addresses. So each home does not in and of itself have an IP address, but instead entire neighborhoods or districts or blocks have one IP address. Problem is, you know, computers still have Mac addresses. So Firefly can still tell which computers are logging in. So you're still going to need a separate computer for each account. That's just base level Sherlock Holmes detective work on it. That would be that would be something that Firefly could use to sort them out, okay? Because families play together all the time in other countries where mass IP uh, blanketing like that is not popular. And then there is this idea that Firefly really, really wants to see House 19 win for some reason. I, I don't know. I think a lot of it has to do with the, these people who are suggesting this think that House 19 has apparently paid Firefly off to let them win. That would have to be a lot of money because it doesn't make any sense for Firefly to kill off a world. A decreased rate of competition in a world means also that there's a decreased rate of players buying cards, buying crowns to fight other players. So if you kill off a world and turn it into farm world, you are decreasing your revenue stream from that world. It is in Firefly's best interest to encourage competition between players, between factions, and between houses in any world that they open. And I know that has not always been the most obvious given Firefly's past record of bringing out new worlds, which effectively kill off the old ones. But I think they probably have weighed the, the, the downsides and the advantages to doing this. And they have apparently, you know, the numbers have spoken. They make more money opening up the new world rather than allowing competition to continue, albeit at a slower rate in older ones. And... Lastly, there seemed to be some misunderstanding about a graph that I linked from Steam Spy in regards to the current number of players playing Stronghold Kingdoms through the Steam client. All that was meant to represent was the fact that we can take a look at one of the clients, the current number of players that are playing it, and how much, what percentage it drops by over time. So from last October to about this month, you know, last what well, was it in August when Global Conflict 1 first launched? We have seen roughly a decrease of 25% in total numbers of active daily active players playing Stronghold Kingdoms. And I think that that the heuristic analysis I sort of is generally indicative of the same trend across multiple platforms, such as the the, the open platform that you can download. The client you can download straight from strongholdkingdoms.com and then there's big point uh, area maybe the mac store a whole bunch of different ones that are localized for different areas different countries over the world and different platforms like macintosh i believe um, unless you can install the one on steam and macintosh anyway i wasn't trying to disprove anything i wasn't trying to say um that there's there are no multi accounters or no alts that anybody's using nothing like that it was just it was just an analysis of how how well the game is doing in terms of players compared to this time a year ago say i thought it was i thought it was valuable so yeah that was pretty much that's what i think of the situation currently in stronghold kingdoms regarding this great 1000 captain attack i know a lot of sensationalist titles have been thrown out there for example, we have the Death of Stronghold Kingdoms video. There's Death of Global Conflict. Well, let me take a look here. Death of Global Conflict. The day Global Conflict died. Um, I hope that's not the case, but things could have gone better, obviously. I don't think there is any real risk of, you know, you don't have to be worried too much about your investment in the game being worth nothing unless a lot of players leave. 
And the only reason they would leave is if Firefly can't inspire confidence in the job they did. And I think the only reason that they can't inspire confidence, if that does become the case, is due to their lack of communication and transparency. So I hope, you know, I hope to see some more reasoned discussion in the forums. I think it is a good thing. I am against censorship of it. But when you start just throwing out the, you know, when you start flaming everybody in the forum who holds a different opinion from your own, it completely is, it runs contrary to any constructive, you know, any, any discussion we could have that might improve the current situation of the game. And therefore is it's ultimately detrimental and you should stop doing it if you actually want these important conversations to take place. And I, I do want them to take place, but I don't, I don't think some people can actually see past their own immediate gratification. There's no long-term strategy here in their minds. So thank you very much for watching as always, and I hope to see you next time.